Hey everybody, I just got back to Hong Kong from LA. I literally just got off the plane. My suitcase is still right there. Uh, apologies for the messy desk again. That's just how it is every time I come back because I just have so much packages. So you see right here, I have a Meiju phone we're waiting for me to unbox and then I have a Yumi Digi device. And this is a Realme. This is a sub brand of Oppo. I can't reveal this phone yet technically, so I have to put that aside. And I also have another device from HomTalk. So I have four phones waiting for me here to unbox. And then tomorrow I'm getting the new iPhone and Apple Watch. And then in about 10 days, I'm getting the LG V40. And then in about another week after that, it's the Huawei Mate 20 Pro. So October is just, September to October is just insane. It's never ending. So actually quite, quite stressful on the walk work, but I'm gonna try to power through it. So I'm gonna start this video on the Meiju 16X. I'll do the Realme later because that's under embargo. So next up will probably be either Umi Digi or the new iPhone. I'll save the home top for the end because that's probably the you know the weakest phone of the four. So this is the 16X, it is a I don't know much about the phone otherwise. Meiju's been kind of, kind of just pumping out phones without really letting people know what's happening. So this phone also has an in-display fingerprint reader. Nice, it kind of looks like a Samsung Galaxy S9 from the front because you have that, you have a top chin and a bottom chin except on the Samsung devices, the screen is actually curved on the sides and this one isn't, it's a it's pretty flat display panel but feels good. The inner hand feels very similar to the Galaxy S9 or an S8. We'll see what else is here. So I'm a fan of major devices because they usually do things a little bit differently and, and you know, they try to innovate a little bit. Like a long time ago, they used to do the, uh, they had the home button. It's a power button that you press, that you tap to go back or you press to go home. So that was like pretty clever and just made the Apple's home, iPhone's home button look a little bit outdated. So you have a USB-C cable right here. So it's, this is a pretty nice packaging. So you can tell even though this is a budget version of the 16, it's still the company's top tier phone because usually the other um, kind of lower tier phones come in a really generic white box. So you have a charging cable, SIM tray. Oh, <laughs> I didn't mean to rip that. I think this is it. Yeah, there's nothing else. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna set it up, I'll be back. All right guys, so I'm back with the Meiju 16X. So I played with this phone all night yesterday and all day today, so I have a very good impression of this phone already. Plus, I'm very familiar with Meiju devices. So first things first, you might be wondering why the wallpaper on this phone is so boring. Because usually, if you've seen my other videos, I tend to use very lively, punchy wallpapers because I think it really shows off the display. Well, I want to use a different wallpaper for this, but there's a bug in this phone right now because this is, I guess, not final software that prevents me from setting a wallpaper. When I try to set a wallpaper, an error message pops up. And this is not new. This bug has been with Meiju software fly me since last year um, with the Pro 7. So I'm a little bit annoyed to be honest because it's been more than a year. How is this bug not fixed? Why is there not an ability to set a wallpaper? But anyway, that's one of the minor, minor nitpicks I have with this phone because overall I love it a lot. So you look at the design, very slim bezels top and bottom, no notch, and it's a very, you know, curved corner, so very elegant look. It resembles the Samsung Galaxy S9 and S8 a lot. I'm talking about the smaller S9 and S8, not the Plus, because this phone, it's really easy to hold in the hand too. This is a six inch display. So it's about the perfect size for me because I find the iPhone 10, which has a 5.8, sometimes a little bit too cramped, even though this, that phone's very easy to hold. And something like a Galaxy Note 9, it's, it's a little bit too big for me sometimes. This is about perfect size. 
six inch, I can reach across easily. And um, Main 2 software makes it a lot easier. It's like for example, look at this. I can bring down a notification shape by swiping down from here. Isn't this cool? It frustrates the hell out of me why Google, Apple, and Samsung don't let you do this natively. Like you have to swipe from the top to bring the notification state. So if you're using something like a Note 9 or a Google Pixel, how do you bring down a notification? You have to readjust your finger to do this every single time. And every time you do this, you're in danger of dropping your phone, right? So why not just let us do this? Now, fortunately on Android, you can set up Nova Launcher and then get this in just about every Android phone. But on iPhone, you still cannot. So I'm testing the iPhone XS Max very soon, I think in tomorrow. And I'm already not looking forward to that phone being so big. I'm gonna need to like do this every time. It's just so dangerous. So that's one of the things I've always loved about made you software, they let you do this, and then they have like, they let you to double tap on the screen to turn on, double tap to turn off. So yes, there is an in-display fingerprint reader in good news. This fingerprint reader, it's excellent. It seems to work better than the fingerprint reader in the, in the Vivo devices. Like on those phones, I would say the success rate of me getting in there is like maybe like 90 to 95%. So every now and then it would not work, but this so far, every single time. I haven't had one single misreading yet. Look at how fast it is. And um, this phone also has face unlock and it's also very fast. So I'll show you really quick. I'm gonna turn on the screen and tilt it to my face. So you see that it, it's a little bit slower than on the OnePlus 6, but not bad, not bad at all. So let's talk about the rest of the hardware. Six inch OLED panel, gorgeous display, deep blacks, punchy colors, great viewing angles, you can see it outdoors. No complaints whatsoever, especially considering this phone is priced around 360 bucks. So you have an earpiece up here that um, also acts as a stereo speaker, but unfortunately the sound coming out of this, it's very weak when you're using it as a loudspeaker. For telephone calls, it's perfectly fine. You do get a headphone jack at the bottom and a speaker grill right here. And on the left, it's completely clean except for a SIM tray right here. So all the volume rockers and power buttons on the right, and they're pretty clicky, pretty tactile. Um, a little bit high to reach the volume rockers, but you know, not a big deal. The camera hardware is uh, very good. You have a 12 megapixel main sensor, Sony IMX sensor with an f1.8 aperture. So that's very good, f1.8. And then you have a secondary telephoto lens at 20 megapixels. So 20 megapixels allows you to, allows the phone to produce lossless zoom up to three times. I mean, almost lossless anyway. I wouldn't call it truly lossless, but it's a better three times zoom than other phones that do not have a 20 megapixel sensor. On the front, selfie camera is also 20 megapixel. To be honest, it's a little bit too hardcore for me. I don't think I need a selfie camera that strong because you know, I have bad skin and stuff. So the phone is powered by a Snapdragon 710 chipset with six gigs of RAM inside and the st internal storage is either 64 or 128 gigs. Now, unfortunately, this phone does not let you put an SD card in it. So there is no expandable storage. I wish Meiju had reconsidered because 64 gigs is, is not a lot. It's not enough actually for a lot of people in 2018 considering, you know, photos are getting better and better and video size. We shoot more and more videos on our phone and sometimes at 4K resolution. So now let's look at the navigation stuff. This phone comes out of the box actually with the traditional Android 3 buttons set up and it works just as advertised. But it also gives you the option to do M back or gesture navigation. So M back, if you're familiar with major phones, you, you, you know what it is. It's the home button back then um, allows you to either go home or go back with just one button. So it works the same here. You tap to go back and then you press on it harder, like force touch to go home. So this phone has a really good tactile engine. So when you force touch, you actually feel like a click. Like you almost feel like you're pressing a button. This tactile engine, it's on par with the iPhones. It, it feels better than almost anything on Android other than the, the LG G7. So again, you tap to go back, you press to go home. Now, unfortunately, there is a little bug, I believe, because if you go in the M back right now, it says that to, to to go to multitask, which is to see a list of all your apps, you have to swipe up from the bottom. But unfortunately, it is not working for me. So look, I'm gonna swipe up from the bottom right now, nothing is happening. So now fortunately, there's that other navigation, which is uh, swiping that we've seen in a lot of Android phones now. But even then, Meiju does it a little bit differently. So I'll show you how. So basically, you swipe up to go home, right? But you notice I have to swipe it up a little bit exaggerated, higher than usual. That's because to go back, you also swipe up, but you swipe up a little bit. So you see that? You swipe up a little bit to go back, 
you swipe up all the way to go home. So it's a little, it's a fine difference between this and this. And I've definitely found myself trying to go back, but accidentally back all the way out to home. And then to bring up recent apps, you swipe up and hold, just like on iPhone 10. So yeah, with a Snapdragon 710 chipset, the Meiju 16X can handle just about any game available on Android. I'm playing Brickneck right now, and the graphics are looking good. There is no frame rate drop, no stutters, and even more graphically intensive game like Hero Hunters, it runs mostly fine except that you can't play on the highest graphics setting. But once you go to the middle setting, the game runs smoothly, absolutely no problems. Oh, I just died. I cannot play games and talk at the same time. Okay, let's talk about the camera. So the camera app, it's uh, relatively clean and bare bones. You get a, from like at least right into the app, you get portrait, photo, video, that's it. To get more emojis, you have to clap on, tap on more and find that. I actually kind of like that. I find that on other phones, like on a Vivo device or a Samsung Galaxy, sometimes it's annoying having to swipe through five menus just to find what you need. So now, unfortunately, the manual control still has this problem where you do not get to see your real-time changes. So right now, I'm changing, you know, I'm changing the ISO, and then I'm going to change the shutter speed here. So that means I should be seeing drastically different um, images in my viewfinder, but that's not the case. So that breaks the manual mode for me. If if I cannot see the changes as I'm tweaking the settings, what's the point of the manual mode? Fortunately, the camera's very good in auto mode. The shutter speed is fast. As mentioned, there is, is a zoom up to three times and it's relatively good. So we'll just go straight to the um, photo samples. So in general, photos come out very lively, very punchy, you know, excellent dynamic range right here, good color accuracy, just a very punchy photo. So right here, this is one time zoom. And I'm gonna go into three times zoom. So you see pretty good details in three times zoom. You know, not quite lossless zoom quality. You ultimately can't compare it to a real camera with a lens that sticks out like that, you know, longer focal length, all of that. But for a three times zoom on a budget device, this is really good. Like the Huawei P20 Pro has better zoom, but that phone is like $900. See, so just an excellent image all around. This is a very balanced image. It didn't really blow out the sky like I thought it would on a lot of budget devices. And um, let's check out portrait mode too. I really like the portrait mode on this phone. The secondary telephone lens also acts as a depth sensor and it does a good job. So you see, I really like the edge detection. First of all, it's on point. It wrapped all around my girlfriend, even the hair. And you look at the background blur, it's it's pretty natural. It doesn't look fake. You know how when, when the bokeh effect is too strong, it almost looks like the person was copied and pasted onto the background. So this looks very natural. And it also works with selfie camera too. So this is a selfie portrait mode. Again, I really like this. The blur, so right here, it looks slightly more fake than the one taken with the main camera, obviously, because this is, has a secondary lens, whereas this is completely software, but still very impressive. Not quite Google Pixel level, but you know, what is. So more low light image here, very clean, not a lot of noise at all. This is a very good camera, especially considering the price range of 350 bucks. Oh, I know, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the Poco phone is even cheaper. Well, I'll get into that later at the end. So let's check out a video really quick. So you see, unfortunately, no stabilization, which is to be expected for a phone at this price range. So really jerky, but if you keep still, the image is very good. It's very well balanced, not overexposing any of the, a little bit overexposure on the bright sky, but not too badly. We'll check out a video in low and nighttime too. So you see three times zoom right here in video and it looks pretty good. A little bit jerky again as I'm walking, but as long as I keep still, it's a good video. Okay, time for a video test. So as mentioned, this phone has stereo speakers. So you do get sound coming out from the bottom speaker grill and also right here. So this is 50% right now. We'll go up to 100%. So you see, Sounds coming out from the left even when you hold on, try to muffle this speaker. But as you can see, the sound coming out here, it's pretty weak actually. Excellent display. Pretty good speaker. I can't say it's an excellent speaker, but, but pretty good. So now this phone, it's $370. Yes, you might, be, as mentioned earlier, you might be thinking a Poco phone, it's $300 and it gives you Snapdragon 845. So this phone's not worth it. I mean, Kinda true, but then also I think it's not fair to compare everything to Poco phone because Xiaomi is being really unfair right here with its pricing. Xiaomi is basically 
doing something really crazy right now. Um, with the Poco phone, they're selling at a loss. What that means is a phone costs more than $300 to make if you have those specs. But Xiaomi is selling at that price because they, they don't care if they lose money when they sell phones. They just want more people to use their phones. So they're, they're really taking a loss right now to look for the future. You can't expect other companies, especially smaller companies like Meiju to follow that. So Meiju cannot sell at a price like Xiaomi because they need to make a little bit of money. And I think as consumers, you can't always just go for the lowest price. You have to respect a company's business model too. So I think factoring all that, I still think this phone is worth considering, especially you get the in-display fingerprint reader, the Poco phone doesn't. And this phone's definitely better looking than the Poco phone from the back. That phone's back is like plastic, it's kind of cheap. And you know, there's a giant notch on that phone too. So this phone looks better overall, but that phone's definitely more powerful and it's cheaper. So it's gonna be tough for a lot of people. But for me, I kind of respect that made you, it's just putting out something really good um, at a reasonable price range. 370, it's not bad. It's just Poco phone, it's crazy and it's making everybody look bad. Anyway, that's it for now. I have a lot more stuff to do. I'm gonna test the iPhone XS Max starting tomorrow, and then I'm gonna test the real Mi phone soon. So thanks for watching.